Hello, first grade scientists. Welcome back to Science with Mrs. Miller. In our last lesson, we talked about how and why animals communicate in different ways. Well, today we will be exploring why animals have body coverings. What animal body coverings do you know about? I'll give you two to get your wheels turning. Skin is one animal body covering. We are covered in skin. There are other animals that are covered in skin too, and we'll learn about them later in the lesson. Fur is another animal body covering. Animals like cats and lions and sheep and hamsters or gerbils all have fur. Can you think of some other body coverings? Go ahead and name them across your fingers. Ready, set, go. All right, eyes on me. Let's see if you named any of these. Feathers, that's right. Birds are covered in feathers. Scales, fish are covered in scales and lizards and some other animals are also covered in scales. Oh, shells. Yes, snails are covered in shells. There, Well, snails wear a shell, right? There are some other animals that also wear a shell, like turtles. And then there are animals that live in the water that have shells, like lobsters and crabs. All right, so let's build our knowledge about this topic of animal coverings. We're going to listen to this story, this book, Animal Coverings. It's written by Natalie Lynn. Let's learn about animal coverings. Fur. Some animals are covered in fur which is a thick layer of hair. Fur insulates animals to keep them warm and dry. Here are some animals that have fur. Scales. Some animals are covered in scales which are small plates that protect their skin. Reptiles have dry scales, while fish have smooth, wet scales. Feathers. Birds are covered by feathers. Feathers keep birds warm and keep water out. They also help birds to fly. Shells. Some animals have a protective shell covering their body. This shell acts like armor to protect the animal's soft body from predators. Turtles and tortoises have both scales and shells. Ooh, very interesting. The last animal covering we have is skin. Some animals are covered in skin. Amphibians, like a frog, are covered in soft, moist skin. Mammals that are covered in skin also have hair but not as much as animals that have fur. All right, so we learned a little bit more about animal coverings and the purpose of those animal coverings. Right now, could you please turn and talk to someone near you and share what you've learned about the different animal coverings, animal body coverings that animals may have and how those body coverings help the animals to survive. Ready, set, share. Time is 
is up. I wonder if you shared what I was thinking. I was thinking, well, some animals like fish and alligators and snakes have scales and those scales help to protect their skin. Other animals have feathers like birds have feathers and the feathers help them to fly. They also help them to float in water like ducks helps them to float in water. What else do we learn? Oh, fur. Fur, we learn, helps to keep animals warm and dry. And shells. Shells also act to protect animals, just like scales do, but shells seem to be even thicker, right? Let's continue to explore this question, why do animals have coverings? As we watch this video, let's explore fur, feathers, scales, or skin. Hello, my name is Kylie, and welcome to Fur, Feathers, Scales, or Skin. All living things have different types of things covering their bodies. Let's learn about the different kinds. Ready to go undercover to find out more? Let's get started. <laughs> not a sweater, t-shirt, dress, or pants. It's skin. Human beings have skin covering our bodies. Take a look at the skin on your arm. What do you notice? What are some words you can use to describe your skin? Did you say smooth? Our skin is smooth most of the time because it is not bumpy. It can be a little bumpy if you get goosebumps. Goosebumps happen when we get a chill or get excited. We call them goosebumps because they look like the skin of a goose without their feathers. We have skin to protect our bodies from the outside world and to keep us from getting sick. Our skin also helps us to keep warm in the winter and cool in the summer. What about the skin of different kinds of animals? Let's take a look at a rabbit. What do you notice? Rabbits, yes, have fur covering their skin. Fur is made up of a lot of hair. We have hair on our bodies too, but not as much as a rabbit. Rabbit fur is soft and cuddly. They have this fur to keep them warm in the winter and protected from rain and bugs in the summer. Here is an antelope. They have hair covering the skin on their bodies but their hair is not very soft. If you were to rub it, it would feel rough and not cuddly at all. This rough hair helps the antelope keep dry and cool in the summer like a sunshade and warm in the winter like a warm coat. They don't have to change clothes like us. Neat. Let's see, hmm, what has feathers? Did you say birds? Right, good job. Birds have covering feathers all over them. Their feathers grow out of their skin and are made out of the same stuff as fingernails. Feathers do a lot of different things. Most birds, like this blue jay, use their feathers to fly. I bet you know the name of this bird that uses its feathers to swim and not fly. Yes, you're right, it's a penguin. Penguins also use their feathers to stay warm and dry, too. Ducks use their feathers to fly and to help them stay afloat on top of the water. Lizards, snakes, and fish have very different coverings than humans, rabbits, birds, and other animals. They have scales. Scales are also made up of the same thing our fingernails are made up of. Snake scales are not slimy like most people think. They are smooth and can be made of very beautiful colors. Snake skin has scales to help protect the snake if it were to get attacked or rub up against something rough. Their scales are like armor on a knight. 
Lizards also use their skin in this way. As lizards and snakes grow, they must shed their skin and grow new skin. Their scales cannot grow bigger, and that is why they must grow new ones. Fish also have scales. They do not shed their skin like snakes and lizards. Their scales grow as they get bigger. Look at this fish called a tarpon. And older tarpon scales can be as big as your hand. Insects do not have skin, feathers, fur, or scales as a covering. They wear their skeletons on the outside. Wow! Their covering is called an exoskeleton. Exo means outside. So the next time you see a cricket, like this one, you are seeing her skeleton. Insects use their exoskeleton to stay safe. They shed or molt this outer skeleton like snakes because it doesn't grow bigger than the insect. Learning about the different types of animal coverings sure is interesting. What kinds of living things are near you? Do you know what type of coverings they have? Fur, feathers, scales, or skin? Practice what you learned using our fun online games and quizzes. Remember, all right, it's time for us to get up and do a little movement activity. So right now, would you please stand up and push in your chair? We are going to do some movement to this video, Animals in Action. Now I have an extra challenge for you. As our friend here, Jack Hartman, calls out different animal names and shows you how to do movement, the movement of that animal, I want you to see if you could name the type of animal covering that that animal has. So for instance, when he says, run, run, run like a cheetah, think what kind of body covering does a cheetah have and see if you can name it. Let's see, a cheetah has fur, you got it. Okay, have fun. See you in a few minutes for some more learning. Children's songs, sing and move along. Children's songs, make your brain and body strong. Run, 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 like a cheetah. Animals in action. Animals in action. Animals 
fun. If you're not already in your seat, please take a seat. We have more learning to do. All right, first grade scientists. So in our book that we listened to and in our video that we watched, we learned that animal coverings help animals to survive or remember that song? Staying alive, staying alive. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, that's right. Survive means staying alive. So animal coverings help animals to survive or stay alive. Let's go through the different types of animal coverings that we have learned about. Well, we've learned about fur and hair, feathers, scales. Ooh, this was a fancy word that we learned in the last video that we watched. Can you say it with me? Say it slowly. Ready? Exoskeleton. Good, a little bit faster. We'll stretch it out a little bit faster. Exoskeleton. One more time. Now say it nice and smooth. Exoskeleton. Very good. So we learned about exoskeletons and shells. Shells are a type of exoskeleton. And we learned about skin. So let's go through each of these coverings and see if we can name some animals that have that, co that covering and also what the purpose for that covering is. Are you ready? Here we go. So can you right now name at least one animal that has fur or hair? Ready? And then say, how fur or hair helps the animal. Ready, set, go. You have 10 seconds. Time's up. Let's see if you named any of these same animals. Now, these certainly aren't the only ones, but let's say a rabbit has fur, tigers have fur, a skunk has fur, and monkeys have fur. And we learned that fur can keep animals warm in the winter. That's right. And during the summer, fur can protect animals from the sun and also protect them from things like bugs. Now let's think about animals that have feathers. Again, you have 10 seconds. Try to name at least one animal that has feathers and talk about how feathers help the animal to survive. Ready, set, go. Time is up. Let's see how we did. Well, we know that all birds have feathers, right? And there are different types of birds. So for many, many birds, feathers help them to fly. That's correct. For some birds, like penguins, feathers help them to stay warm. And then for other birds, like ducks, feathers help them to stay afloat in the water. Okay, now what about scales? Think of some animals that have scales and then talk about how scales help the animals to survive. 10 seconds, ready, set, go.
All right, 10 seconds is up. Let's see how you did. Were you able to name at least one animal? And were you able to talk about how scales help the animal? Let's see. Oh, fish. We learned that fish have scales. And the fish's scales are wet, right? But then lizards have scales that are dry. So do snakes. And so do alligators. Now, what is the purpose of scales? How do scales help anal animals to survive? I remember hearing that scales act as a protective armor to the animals. So for instance, a snake has scales to protect it against attacks from other animals. Or if it rubs up against something that maybe is rough that could rip its skin, I, it protects the, the snake from getting hurt. I guess that's probably really important since snakes slither on the ground. They probably they probably rub, rub up against things that are sharp or rough pretty often. Okay, now what about animals that have either, um, that have an exoskeleton or a shell? Can you think of, of an animal with an exoskeleton or a shell? And talk about how the exoskeleton or shell helps the animal survive? Ready, set, 10 seconds. All right, time's up. Let's see what we have here. A snail wears a shell on its back, right? So a snail is not completely covered by its shell, but part of its body is covered by its shell. Same with a turtle or a tortoise. Most of a turtle's body is covered by a shell. And have you ever seen what a turtle does when it gets scared? Yes, that's right. It pulls its head in and its arms and its legs to protect itself. That is the purpose of an exoskeleton or a shell. It serves the purpose of protecting itself from outside danger. Let's see what else. Lobsters. Lobsters are covered. Their entire body is covered by a shell or an exoskeleton. Same with crabs, covered by an exoskeleton or a, sh a shell. We call these two types of animals um, crustaceans. Then insects, like the cricket and the ladybug and all other insects, they are all covered with an exoskeleton. Do you remember what that word exoskeleton means? Yeah, it means skeleton on the outside. We, you and I, humans, have our skeletons on the inside. Well, insects have skeletons on the outside. Okay, and last but not least, skin. Think of one, at least one animal that has skin and talk about how the skin helps animals to survive. Ready, set, 10 seconds, and go. Time's up. Let's see. I'm sure you all got this one. Humans, you and I, we are animals that have skin, right? And as we learned in that video that we just watched, our skin helps to protect us from the outside world. It helps to keep us from getting sick. It protects us against germs. And it also keeps us cool in the summer and helps us to stay warm in the winter. What other animals have skin? Dolphins have skin. And elephants have skin. Frogs also have skin. All right, now for your first activity sheet, you're going to need 
a pair of scissors, and a glue stick. I'll read the directions to you. It says animal body coverings. Different animals have different types of body coverings. Cut out the animal pictures on this page, then paste them into the correct category on the following page. And here, on the following page, it says animal body coverings. Paste the animals you cut out into the correct category. So after you cut out all of your animals, you're going to put them into the correct category here under either scales, fur, feather, shell, or smooth skin. Then, once you're finished with this, I have another activity for you to do. We want to really exercise those science brains. So, I've got some more thinking work for you to do. Are you up for the challenge? I know you are. So, for this activity sheet, this is activity sheet number two, you'll do this next. The directions say, draw a picture of an animal making sure to draw the animal's covering. covering. Then tell how the animal covering helps that animal to survive. So you'll draw the picture here. Make sure that you label the covering, right? So if, if you draw a bird with feathers, after you draw the feathers, you'll want to write the word feathers and point to the feathers so that we know that that's the animal covering. Then you're going to say how that animal covering helps the animal to survive. So you might say, feathers help birds to fly, comma, stay warm, comma, or float in water. Oh my goodness, but wait, there's more. Now this last activity is optional. That means you do not have to do it. But if you would like to do it, it could be a lot of fun. I have a little hands-on activity for you that you can do at home if you would like, okay? So let me just walk you through the sheet. It says, question hypothesis. Circle which body covering will keep the animal the warmest. What do you think, skin or fur? Then you're going to need these materials if you're doing this activity at home. Plastic bags, fur cloth, ice water, and thermometers. This is the procedure. These are the steps that you'll follow. You'll put a thermometer in the plastic bag, then place the plastic bag in ice water, and you'll read the thermometer. Then you'll record the temperature. Then you'll replace steps one through four with the plastic bag with fur inside. I'm sorry, I just noticed a typo there. It shouldn't have said replace. It should have said repeat. So number five, let me read it again, it should say, Repeat steps one through four with a plastic bag with fur inside. So you'll put a piece of fur inside and then you're going to compare the temperatures. What was the temperature inside the plastic bag? Just by itself, the plastic bag acts as like skin. And then the temperature inside the fur lines plastic bag. Hmm. Then conclusions, which covering will keep an animal warmer in cold temperature? You're going to say what you think and how you know. Remember, scientists like to prove what they know. So say how you know. And oh my goodness, there's even more. I know what you're saying. You're saying, Mrs. Miller, we just still want to even learn more about this topic. Well, you're in luck because if you have time, if you would like, again, this is optional, you can click the blue button up in the top right-hand corner to listen to this book what if you had animal hair? This is a really fun book. Do you remember how we read that book? What if you had animal feet? Well, it's by the same author. It follows the same type of structure and it's a really fun book to read and think about. So if you'd like to come back at another time to listen to the story or if, if you have time after you're done with both of your activity sheets, feel free to come back and listen. Thank you so much for learning with me today. First grade scientists, I will see you next time. Have a great day and keep learning.